All right, so here we are going to look at a boost converter and try to look at how to model the specific AC analysis of the frequency response of one specific calculation. In this case, um, we are going to be looking at the duty ratio signal to the output, looking at the AC analysis of that one. So first, let's start with a boost converter. So this does assume that you already have your boost converter generally designed. And just for reference, and I'm using um, version 8.50i um, for this. So this will definitely work for that. Other variations may be slightly different, but actually these are pretty straightforward and have been the same for a while. So this should probably work. Okay, with that, let's just look at what we have. We have a power stage. We have a buck converter, sorry, a boost converter here. So um, this is actually based on a PFC design. So we're just looking at the boost converter itself, but we're going from a relatively high voltage here and we are boosting. So we have our inductor here. We have our active switch, our diode, output capacitor, and our load. And this is driven, this gate signal is connected over here. And this is driven by our very simple setup here. This is open loop. So we have a sawtooth reference here. You can look in here and see that it is a sawtooth we can set our switching frequency here so we're going with 100k right now and then we can set the duty ratio here we're just using a set value here um, in between it has to be in between the amplitude so here um, zero to one and then it's going to be driving our uh, multi-level mosfet driver so you can use this for to drive your mosfet and between this one so you have 10 volts to zero so that signal is going to go to our gate and drive our system. Notice here that we're putting our pop trigger on the gate signal. And for example, you could technically put it over in our switching. This, this node is switching, right? We could put that there, but then we're going to have more noise um, that potentially could come from the other sources. So usually you want to put that on a really clean signal. This just says like, what is the period? And then to find that very, periodic signal and then it can find the steady state very quickly um, from that. So that's why we put the trigger on the gate. All right, so let's just make sure that this runs. So let's go back to, in case you maybe are less familiar with Simplis, um, we just need to go choose analysis. And let's just go through this real quick. The main three things that you would be using are uh, pop, periodic operating point, AC, which we will get to soon, and then transient. And if you're familiar with maybe some other simulators, most of them work only with transient. So you set the initial conditions, you turn on the simulator, and then it simulates over a period of time here. You can see we can set the um, time here. So stop time, so how long does it simulate for? And you can see the outputs. So let's just see that. Um, let's run that real quick. And you can see, actually I ran it for quite a long time here. So you can see we're getting a lot of different things. Um, here we have our output voltage. So that's, you know, we're seeing it go up and down. It's from, it's a transient. And we have some things here. We want to um, kind of take these apart. So actually let's click on here and we're going to do curves and stack all so that we can kind of separate them. And we're looking at the gate. Usually I just do the gate to kind of see like how we're doing, um, seeing that it is indeed periodic. And so we can see that the gate is going and that we are getting switching because our inductor current, you can clearly see our inductor charging and discharging here. And then our voltage is changing. So we can see all of those here. So that's good. Um, now let's go to the next part. So actually let's zoom out real quick. Okay, just go to full. So you can see this is definitely the transient, which is fine if that's what you want to look at. But now I want to see the steady state. So let's now go to choose analysis again. And we're going to, actually I'm going to get rid of transient. You can keep them both, but I usually just do one at a time. Now we're going to go to pop. And this is the periodic operating point. And usually these are, you have to set the maximum period here, but this is, usually it's going to, go well it's going to go right to our steady state operating point which a lot of times is what we want anyway so that's the power of pop um, it is a really great tool and it's great for when you know exactly what you want to do in this case we want to find the steady state i don't care about this 
transients at this point, I want steady state. So we can press OK or run here. Ah, and we can see our graphs have now jumped straight to steady state. So we can see the uh, inductor current here. So we can see it is in, this is milliamps. We can see it's in continuous conduction mode. We can get the ripple, we can get the average value, and we can see that our output voltage is a little over 400, so 402, and really very, I mean, very small ripple here. So we can see that this is operating correctly as we want. Okay, so that's great. Now we want to say, um, okay, I have this converter. We're gonna do open loop right now because we just wanna characterize the converter. So let's go back to our disk image here real quick. Move this over, close this. I wanna look at this specific uh, frequency. It's a transfer function. We wanna look, the, get the, uh, excuse me, frequency response of this. So we need to create a perturbation on the duty ratio and then look at how that affects the output voltage. So V out here. So you can ignore all this stuff up here, it's just V out. Okay, so let's look at how we would set that up. Let's go back to SlimPlus now. Well, we want to create an, an perturbation in the duty. So this is open loop, but if we wanted to not just have a constant duty, but an AC, then we need to add a part here. So let's look at place and it is a source and it's going to be, it is a AC source and it, this one says for AC analysis, which is what we're going to do next. So that's the one that you want to put here. Okay. We can just open this up real quick. The magnitude is one, the phase is zero. There's really not many parameters you can, you're changing here. Um, we just stick with those. It actually is quite effective in, um, making the signal automatically. So usually you just place that where you want it to be. Uh, here we're slightly above some value, but that's fine. We just want to create the perturbation here. And that's going to create perturbations at different frequencies, and it's going to sweep through all the different frequencies and see, so it's going to go through our system. It's going to affect our gate here. We're going to be keeping the input voltage the same, but we want to see how it affects the output voltage. So to do that, we need now to find a probe. Oops, excuse me. Misclick there. Okay. And there are many probes here, so sometimes just look for it. Ah, here it is. And it says probe AC slash noise. And here we can go down to the Bode plot probe with measurements is just has more options. So this is saying I would like to do AC analysis. So I want to do frequency sweep, a frequency sweep of this AC signal and I wanna look at the effect it has on some other output. So here, our input is gonna be D. So we co copy this uh, point here. So it's just, um, oops, it's probe, uh, terminal. And we're gonna put this over here. So we're telling our AC analysis, our frequency response probe here, that we want to have the input being the duty ratio and then we'll need an output. So actually I'm gonna come back to that, this here. I'm gonna take V out because we wanna look at the output voltage as our output, put that in here. We can look, open this. Really this allows us to do, you know, if we want some certain grids or if we wanna, um, how it's displayed, but I just, can, you, most of the time you can just go with your, um, the default. So it's gonna be in DB, which is kind of the standard, We'd have two grids of phase and gain. You can switch however you want to uh, show it. Actually, I'm going to do gain and phase. I prefer that. Say So we'll say OK. And now we'll simulate it, see if we're missing anything. So let's choose analysis. To run this, we click AC. The reason that that pop kind of gets um, grayed out here is because AC analysis will not work without pop. You need to have pop because what it's doing is at each frequency it's putting in, it's using the periodic operating point to find the steady state and then looking at the amplitude, which is the magnitude, and then the phase shift and from the input to the output. So if you can't achieve pop with your system, you're not gonna be able to do AC analysis. So that's why it's important to check that pop works in your system first before moving to the AC. Okay, so that's why we did that. And that's why it's grayed out. Here we can go to AC, and there's just a few things that we can change. Um, 
we can go, we'll just start with these settings for now. Um, 100 um, millihertz to 200 kilohertz. So this is twice the um, frequency, the switching frequency of the converter. Let's go a little higher. Let's go to 500 kilohertz here. And this is points per decade. So we'll leave this at 100 and we'll see how it runs. So we can go ahead and press run here relatively fast and then on the right here we can see our beautiful curve so we have the gain here so we have um, our double pole over here and then it's going to be decreasing here um, rolling off and then we have some higher little peaks here actually we'll see them also in the phase here we can look at the phase and then one thing to note is that we have all these little peaks. You say, well, why do we have that? Well, that's because um, we're actually seeing the harmonics of the switching frequency. Usually the modeling we do only is really good up to, I think it's half of the switching frequency. So really we don't have to plot above that, but you can here if you want. Um, another thing we can do is actually go even lower frequency. The powerful part about the model and this one, it's not too exciting because it's pretty consistent at low frequencies, but is that because there's no ground floor, it's not a real system, it's a simulated one, we can actually see how a very low frequency can affect the system where that is not always possible in a laboratory setting. So it's just a, a cool thing that you can do with simulation to understand your system better uh, before moving it to the actual um, physical system. All right, so if we want to maybe see how this is, actually it was pretty quick in simulating, but if we wanted to, for example, we're running a whole bunch of these and maybe we want a larger, our system is more complex. If you want it to go faster, for example, you're just trying to like tinker some things and see the general curve, you can reduce this down to 10 points per decade, for example, we'll run this again. And you can see from the ghost of the previous one to the new one, the, you know, the resolution is not quite as good and it's a little bit uh, choppier at the higher frequencies but it actually was quicker to simulate so you can see how long it took not very long and if we want to get really high for example maybe we really want to see like at this peak or what's happening at these different peaks uh, maybe so for whatever system maybe it's more complicated than this one then choose analysis again we could say 500 and then we're going to get a very oops it took a little bit longer to run on that one um, but we can see it's a more accurate uh, waveform here and we can just check on how long that took to run so that took three seconds instead of one second to run um, so that's just what you can do with that and then here you can then analyze your system if you want to change parts about your um, base plant, then you could go around and tailor your uh, values for the capacitor, inductor, or other parts of your circuit to affect this curve before moving on to your control loop. So I'll stop this tutorial part right here and we'll move on to the loop in a future one.